Hi everyone, my name is Bryant and I'm a current PGY1 at the University of Colorado in the Department of Orthopedics. Thanks so much for tuning in to listen to my junior research presentation. The title of my project is Acute Quadriceps Tendon Repair. This was a review article that was performed this year under the mentorship of Dr. Rachel Frank. This article focuses mainly on the current concepts behind acute quadriceps tendon ruptures and their management. Starting off with a little bit of background, quad tendon injuries are relatively uncommon, accounting for only 3% of all tendon injuries. These injuries most commonly occur in middle-aged patients and are four times more common in men than in women. And these injuries are thought to occur mostly from overuse, uh, generally as the sequelae of pre-existing tendon pathology. While any patient can present with an acute quad tendon rupture, patients with RA, lupus, gout, chronic renal failure, diabetes, hyperparathyroidism, and peripheral vascular disease are considered to be at risk. Tendon ruptures generally treated surgically with improved functional outcomes. However, incomplete ruptures in certain settings can be managed effectively with non-operative treatment. When surgery is indicated, early repair or reconstruction is preferred in order to avoid tendon retraction and muscle atrophy. A brief review of anatomy here. The extensor mechanism is comprised of the quad muscle, quad tendon, patella, patellar retinaculum, patellar ligament, also commonly referred to as the patellar tendon, and adjacent soft tissues. A little deeper look at anatomy here. The knee joint itself is a type 3 lever, which the effort is applied between the load, which is the foot, and the fulcrum, uh, which is the knee in this case. The patella is a significant component of the extensor mechanism because it acts as a fulcrum and increases the distance between the center rotation of the knee and the quadriceps. This effectively uh, increases the lever arm of the quadriceps and gives it a mechanical advantage. Looking at some biomechanics, Huberti uh, and colleagues were among the first to investigate force relationships of the extensor mechanism and found that forces in the quad, tendon, and patellar tendons respectively changes with range of motion. They noted that increasing forces were common in the quad tendon as the contact area of the patella moved more proximal in the femur, or uh, in more simpler terms, the forces in the quad tendon increase with more knee flexion. Forces are reportedly highest in the quad tendon during eccentric contraction, which is when most of these injuries occur. And when they occur, they typically uh, occur in the avascular zone of the tendon, which is zone 2, and is approximately 1 to 2 centimeters proximal to the upper patellar border. Looking at some current concepts, we'll discuss a little later on that there really isn't a consensus in the literature regarding an ideal surgical technique, but regardless of technique, it is agreed upon that timing matters and that optimal results occur when repair is performed early within two to three weeks of injury. Looking at the repair techniques, there's really kind of two techniques that are used. Uh, on the left, a more traditional transosseous tunnel repair, which involves bone tunnels through the patella. And then on the right, um, a little newer technique, which involves repair utilizing suture anchors. Comparing these two techniques biomechanically, uh, recently ongoing colleagues found suture anchors to be superior to transosseous tunnels, um, both with smaller gap formations and significantly greater loads to failure. Furthermore, evaluating repair characteristics, recent biomechanical study by Lay and colleagues compared uh, tendon repair uh, in 14 match specimens. They compared Krakow versus whip stitching and also compared high tensile strength tape versus strength suture. Results showed less total normalized elongation and greater maximal loads to failure when suture tape was utilized, uh, specifically with combination of a Krakow stitch configuration. Unfortunately, there's limited literature out there regarding comparison of outcomes with different surgical techniques. Deficits are not uncommon, with residual muscular atrophy and strength deficits commonly being reported. Nevertheless, these deficits don't appear to largely impact patient satisfaction as reported in the literature. In general, the few studies that are out there show excellent results in range of motion and return to pre-injury activities 
following acute quad tendon rupture repair, regardless of the approach, and overall low rates of re-rupture and reoperation were reported. Historically, prolonged immobilization for the acute post-op management was utilized with repair of quad tendons, but early functional rehabilitation protocols have recently gained traction. Langenhan and colleagues recently compared early rehab versus uh, rehab with utilizing a more traditional approach with an immobilization period. They found no difference in IKD scores at 4.5 years, also found similar rates of re-rupture and complications, suggesting that early motion may be equivocal to some of the more traditional protocols that utilize early immobilization. So in summary, uh, looking at the literature, uh, techniques do vary and there is no obvious superior method that is currently supported in the literature, which brings about the need you know, in the future for more higher level comparative studies, specifically looking at uh, outcomes and long-term outcomes. And uh, post-op rehab is, is important. The current literature suggests that compared to more traditional protocols that involve immobilization, early motion may be equivocal and allow patients to get back to activities sooner. Thank you so much for your attention.